Hello and welcome back to the channel, it's Mark from PowerSonic and Apprentice One to One. Today I'm going to be installing a Wallbox Pulsar Max. For those of you who follow the channel regularly, you'll know that I am at home and we have solar PV and battery storage on my house and I'm going to show how that can integrate with this Wallbox EV charge point. So let's get the box open, see what's inside and go through attaching this onto the wall. So first thing is we can see we've got quite a detailed instruction manual. It does run through it in various languages as well on each page, so there's not a section per se for a particular language, it just kind of covers it off as you run through. But in essence, there is a detachable wall plate on this. We're going to run through the act of actually doing it, so I'm not going to dwell too much on this. But there is a detailed instruction manual. We've then got the box itself. And here you can see is the Pulsar Max from Wallbox. We also have a little compartment here with some other bits and pieces. So we've got a, a power meter. We'll get to that later on. We've also got um, a holding bracket for the tethered lead. And some other bits and pieces, as you can see in here, do not discard. So we're going to need this later on as well. So we're going to use that all with the app. And we can see in this little bag here, we've got all the fixings for attaching it to the wall. So everything comes in this little kit. I'm going to keep all these bits together inside that box so we know we're not losing any of that. And the remainder is just the charge point itself. So first up, we need to detach the wall bracket plate from the back of here. So I'll do that and we'll get it mounted to the wall. You see this little sticky pad here that we need to lift off and remove. And that way we should then be able to remove this back plate. And that's the part we need for mounting onto the wall. So we can see looking at the data sheet here, this is a 7.4 kilowatt EV charge point at 230 volts. There's also an 11 kilowatt and a 22 kilowatt variant as well. The one we're installing here today is on a domestic single phase supply. So now we're at that stage with the bracket on the wall, we need to get into the wall box and start popping the cable in into this and getting everything connected up. So this front cover simply pops off. There is a screw that goes in the bottom to hold it on, but out the box that's not fastened. And then you can see we've got some fixing screws again, just in the front here that we need to remove to gain access to the internals. And that's inside the charge point itself. You need T20 torque bits to undo the two screws on the front. Then you need to remove this ribbon cable, which simply pulls out and then you can set this to one side. So you then need to get your T15 bits and fasten them into the charge point itself so you know it's not going to slip off the bracket. So we now need to make an incision in the bottom cable grommet because we're doing bottom entry on this and then feed the cable up into the charge point ready for termination. So if you can see in there, it says PME UK over at this side. So if you're on a TNCS with a PME supply, you need to put your earth into here. Otherwise it goes into the one adjacent to it just there. So a little extra step to make sure you're taking account of, depending on the earthing system you're installing this onto. Now, as I say, we're popping it in on the PME terminal on here. And you can see that clearly illustrated here in the instruction manual as well, based on the type of system you're installing. 
the earth cable needs to be installed in a different location and it even gives you the wiring variant for the free phase setup as well if you've got one of those charge points. And inside here you can see there's a little potentiometer here with numberings on it. They seem to go from number 0 to 9 and if you look in the manual it will dictate to you what these all mean. So in our case here we want it on 7 which is for 32 amps output. So this is the leaflet that comes with the e energy monitoring device as part of the wall box kit. If you scan the QR code it takes you off to this wall box help centre page and on here if you scroll through it it talks about all of the different modes and options you can put into place. So there's power boost which means when you turn some load off in the house it'll send some of that excess energy or extra energy over to your electric vehicle. You can do power sharing so if you've got a few of these wall boxes all on the same supply they can talk to each other and share their supply amongst charging vehicles. You've got dynamic power sharing, so it monitors an entire building's demand and compares it to its maximum allowable value. So if you're worried about service fuses and such, you can protect against that. And then the EcoSmart, which is the one I'm excited about using here because this ties in with green energy generated from solar power or wind turbines and such and helps you direct that into your vehicle. So I need to go through the instructions on this now and see exactly how we're going to get all of this set up and I'll bring you along with me while I get that done. So I've used my data cable that's in this EV Ultra down to the charge point location to connect into the comms port that's going to link back to the energy monitor at the consumer unit. Bring you in closer and show you how that's wired and I'll also drop a little screen grab of my phone with the manual on to explain a little bit about where those connections are supposed to be as well and drop that in alongside this little talk through. So if you can see in here you've basically got four terminals. Now the first two a voltage so they're called plus 12 volts and ground and then the other two are a D minus and a D plus so I guess the kind of comms between the A and B location of the energy meter which is currently in this box I'm going to take that inside and we'll have a little look at how all that wires up in there I'm going to close this up now we can pop the front back on with a ribbon cable secure the cover and we'll pop the bracket on the wall as well that holds the tethered lead and then we'll jump inside and run through the energy monitor setup in there So there's the wall box N1CT and I'll drop a little screen grab up and talk through how this should be wired but you can see there's a component wired across the um, communication cables coming back from the charge point and that's to just show it its end of line. There's also power in here so line and neutral and then on the bottom we've got the CT cable that wires up and also the plus 12 volts and ground voltage signal going off to the charge point. But we'll have a look through the manual on that. It's all wired in on the distribution board now. So we can jump outside, get this powered up and see where we're at. Point of note with this, I've got a point of isolation down here. So there's been absolutely no voltage inside this enclosure while I've been working on it. This has popped into its EPS mode. So obviously there would be voltage coming into here. But in the off position, there's no grid or EPS energy. 
coming into this enclosure. So you can see we have power, We've got this illuminated light on the front, so we know there's power down there now. We've made all of our connections at the consumer unit and everything's connected inside here. Now before I run through the testing process, because we are going to test this with the TIS EV100, we're going to look at the user details section here. So I'll just pop these instructions to one side and they open out with a little cardboard slip and you can see there's a QR code. So I thought I'd just run through this as if I was a consumer um, and see how easy this is because often that's the complaint from us as electricians out on site is you know how difficult some of this commissioning sometimes is. So we'll run through it start to finish and see how long it takes and how difficult it is. Pop my glasses on so I can read. Now it's saying here to set up your charger you need the Wallbox app. So I'm going to download that first up. So I'm using Android, there'll be different apps if you're on iPhone. But if we just put Wallbox in, I expect it will pop up. So there we go, we've got the Wallbox app with their logo. And we can start downloading that as well. So it's just doing the download now on my phone. And that's obviously depending on your signal as to where you are, as to how long that will take. We've got pretty good Wi-Fi here, so we should be in business in no time tells you inside here that you can save money with charging schedules, so if you've got off-peak rates and such, you can use those. Control your charger from anywhere, so if you want to lock it, unlock it, you can do that. And access advanced features, which is what we're hoping to do to tie in with the solar system. So we've now got the app, we can open it. I assume I'm going to have to register and make an account and stuff as normal. So we'll just wait for that to open. In fact, we might as well go to a bigger screen and then you guys can maybe follow along as well. So yeah, it wants me to create an account, so I'll just do that now. So now we've registered, I should just be able to log in. So first link your charger, I assume it's just taking you through how you do it. Configure your charger, control the experience, um, and it says you can enable public charging if you wish. So we're going to allow it to search for a charger. Uh, using the Wallbox app, I will let it do it. So we'll scan the QR code on the side of the charge point. And it's loaded that in there now. So the charge is added correctly. We're going to connect. That's to enable Bluetooth. Uh, pair it. So we'll allow all this, this is just the delayed start charges and things. We'll enable cloud connectivity. So I have to pop it onto my Wi-Fi and this is where I um, realise I don't know the Wi-Fi code for my network. We'll uh, figure that out. So it's now trying to get the wall box connected onto the Internet of Things through the data I've just put into it. And um, this is usually the frustrating point we find with most EV charge points where they don't like connecting onto a customer's Wi-Fi. So fingers crossed this is going to play ball quickly. And it looks to have done. So you will now have access to your charger wherever you are. So let's get started. Saying it wants an update already for the charger, so the software is available for your charger. Please get closer to connect to Bluetooth. And we'll check now. So we're going to download this software. Might as well get it all up to date before we start doing any of the commissioning. I can pop my glasses off now. Um, so those ones that change the colour in the lens based on the brightness of the sun and it does make you look a bit weird sometimes when you're between lights. Uh, take them off and I'm going to install that. So it's searching for the device again. We're going to connect to it. It's a good example of doing a software update actually just to show how quickly or not quickly this will take so we'll do it in real time you can see it's already up to 77% installing the software update onto the wall box so fingers crossed this is a relatively quick process um, it says here once the process has started you'll not be able to interrupt it until it's complete and once complete your charger will restart make sure Wi-Fi is enabled on your mobile device and stay close to it so that's what we're doing here and fingers crossed we get a good result so you can see there, we have had that result. So available connections. Connecting to the charger by Bluetooth again first. And you can see we're now connected. And at the minute we've used no energy whatsoever. Now fortunately, I do have an EV van, so we can pop this on charge and see what it does. 
and we do also have the solar PV. Uh, sorry, yeah, this is the solar PV. So we're going to run through all of that and see um, exactly how all this works. So if we go into the settings, uh, we can have a look at upgrades first, and you can see here we've got the Eco Smart option. So we need to enable that. Okay, so obviously the charge has done its software update, and if you remember earlier on in the video, I did say it would restart. I think it's gone through that restart process whilst I was trying to then enable some of the advanced functionality. Got a bit ahead of myself. You can see it's restarting here. It can take up to four minutes. It said to start with. We're now down to three, so we'll see how this comes together once it has rebooted. It's back online, and we'll look at some of the advanced features at that stage. So I missed an important step through the course of setting this up. It's a little switch here. So you can see here that power boost is down the bottom and there's a T at the top. So you need to make sure you set this to the right position based on how you're going to set it up. Be in position T and that's where I put this. I'm going to pop all this back together, get the power back on and see how we're looking at that stage. Okay, so you can see we've now got the power boost and the Eco Smart options available. We'll do power boost first. It says to do that um, before you start messing about with the Eco Smart. So we'll make sure we get that sorted. It says max current in the electrical system and we've got a 100 amp service head. So I'm gonna pop that in there, so it knows that that's our available maximum. And we're now gonna start the Eco Smart. So we'll enable Eco Smart. So you can see you've got the Eco Mode or the full green. I'm gonna leave it in Eco Mode and that's to minimize the use of grid power. So it's maybe not gonna switch on and off quite so readily, depending on what the solar's doing and the export going out to the grid. But we'll leave it in that mode and see how we get on with that to start with. So they're now set up. If we go back into the options in terms of our charging, um, it's, seeing, it's saying to plug the charge, plug the vehicle in. So I'm going to do that and we'll see what options we get in terms of setting this up for its charging state based on the changes we've just made with EcoSmart. So you can see now with the app in use and all of those CT measurements taking place within the consumer unit, it's now waiting for that green energy, basically waiting for my system to start exporting to the grid. As soon as it sees that, it will ramp up the charge rate into the vehicle. Now, unfortunately, it's a bit cloudy today and we've not got any excess generation right now. I'm hoping that the sun might come out later on. So we'll jump back and get some more footage of that as and when it's happening. But it is interesting to know if I want to start charging anywhere, I can press start and it'll say after this action, Eco Smart and schedules will not take effect until you unplug the van. So if I wanted to, I could override that and just charge up as normal but we'll cancel that off. Other options you've got inside the app, you see you can add schedules. So if you want to schedule the charge to take place at a lower time um, of energy costs over the night, for example, you can do all of that. It gives you insights into charging, so charge cycles that you've put in place over the course of the month as well. Um, and you can see exactly what energy you've been using. If you want, you can enable uh, options to use this as a public charger. So if I go into the OC, PP. There you can pop your provider in that you use. There's loads of different options that you can go for um, and then you can sell the energy to other people pulling up onto your drive to make use of it. Which if you're wanting, it's a useful to have feature. It's not something we're going to be doing here, but it's good to know. Um, and as I say now, it's just sat there waiting to see if some sunshine comes out and pops a bit of charge into the car. I can keep an eye on things with my SOAX app and see if we do get some excess generation and if it does start to input that into the electric van out there. So I'll show you the setup we've got from the van back to the charge point, and then we'll jump back and have a look at this when it's working in eco mode with a bit of sunshine. And then we'll have a chat through with this charge point, what I think of it, some of the pros and cons, and we'll go from there. So you can see we can run through a test sequence as well using the TIS EV100. Obviously we need the MFT brought in as well, but just to give a quick functionality test of it. So if we go into our charging state, put everything as okay, can see it now thinks there's a vehicle connected so if i go into the app on the wallbox controller start a charge cycle i'm going to say yes start charging now so you can see it's saying we've got the delay because of the dna's requirements to have a delay on your charging we're going to skip the delay just to bypass that for the demonstrations in terms of testing and you can see now the wallbox has put itself into a happy state so we're now charging that we can see we've got the light illuminated for l1 so if i swing it round into an earth state fault now we should get a red led on the front of this telling us that there's something not quite right so i'll swing that over you can see it's put itself into the fault state if i take that fault away reset it 
you can see it's now happy again and ready to start that charge cycle. So you can see we've now on charge through the wall box, lead just zooms off down the side of the house there, and that is currently running off solar energy. I'll show you the app in just a sec. So there you can see we've currently got 1.1 kilowatts flowing out of the wall box. And as you can see, that says it's green energy. It's coming straight off the array on my roof and straight into the van for a free charge up. What's not to like about that? And obviously once the sun drops away and that green energy dies off, it will stop charging as well. So we can make full use of that. And for me, that's ideal over a weekend where I can make sure um, we're just using green energy to fill the van up. And then during the week when I need those top ups to get to work the next day, I can disable that and just fill it up because it's not sunny enough. Okay, so hopefully you've seen whilst watching me install this, it is really, really simple to get on the wall and wire up. There's a few bits and pieces you need to bear in mind if you are using the um, meter in inside with the, the way it communicates with this charger itself. You have your 12 volts and ground connection, which we used cat cable for. And then you also have the comms cable, basically the plus and minus for the RS485 or whatever that's called that links back to that same energy meter that's now living inside the consumer unit. Just need to make sure you get your wires the right way around on that and that you don't forget to install the resistor that goes at the end of line. So if you've got a series of these charge points, the ones that live in the middle basically would have that switch inside here that I showed you earlier on set to NT for not terminated and there would be no resistor installed either and then the charge points at the start and end of those lines are set to T and the resistor goes at the end. It's just something to make sure you read in the manual. It shows it very clearly on the downloadable app that we've been scrolling through here, sorry the PDF file, having a look at. So that's really straightforward and simple. The fixings are solid and sound, they're always um, good quality nice to see that with a EV charge point manufacturer they're not just throwing in the cheapest nastiest fixings I was quite happy to use them this is a nice feature as well for storing the cable show you all of it wrapped up as well at the end of the video and yeah I'm impressed with it we'll see how it goes with the app um, obviously we charge a business vehicle up at home so it's going to be interesting to see how it logs all of the information in terms of the energy that's gone into the van and where that energy might have come from um, and it just shows that with Wallbox, you can make use of your solar generation and or wind, wind turbines, whatever you've got on your home, and put that energy directly into your vehicle without any grid consumption whatsoever. The choice is yours. Times when you want to put a bit of grid power in because you're needing to be filling the vehicle up when it's maybe not sunny or windy, you have that feature as well. And um, yeah, this is going to work very nicely alongside the solar system. And I'll keep reporting back as the weeks and months go on. So there you have it. You can see it on the wall. I think it looks nice. There's obviously this illuminated light on the front. You can turn that off as well. So after you've had an interaction with it, it will go out. I'm going to leave it on because it's a nice little feature and it'll help a bit in the dark with some light down here as well to find it. This is a really solid option for anyone who's looking at an EV charge point for both a single and three phase setup. Obviously, you need to make sure you get the right one for your particular um, supply arrangements. It's got all of the usual stuff built in that we need. So there's internal RCDs. There is also the PME pen fault protection. So we can drop these on the end of our circuits in full knowledge that those things are ticked off. As always, we've put an upfront type A RCD on these charge points anyway. We do that as standard across the board. And that's because of some of the historical comments I've made around some of the electronic RCDs. But it's personal choice. You don't have to do it. The tech is in the product. And I'm sure as standards and time develop and move on, the wiring regulations will catch up with that as well. You've seen through commissioning on the app with this. It is really straightforward. The data and detail is in there. And it is now working in running off sunshine to charge that vehicle up on my drive, which is absolutely what we wanted. It's perfect for that as well if you've got any questions in and around this video please do get involved in the comments i'll leave links over to the wallbox website where you can find out more information about these charge points and also some of the retailers where you can purchase them from in terms of pricing they're excellent value for money more than competitive compared to some of the other products that are available to us out in the marketplace and until the next time i'll see you then